All right, so I'd asked you to read a chapter by Goldberg, um, you know, and he, in the chapter, um, the author talks about appropriating the phonographic medium. Now, I, I've addressed this in some, some units, and, you know, what does that mean? The phonographic medium is a medium of consumption. It's a media of listening to music, you know, and hip-hop DJs and a lot of these, you know, Flash, Theodore specifically, you know, they figured out a way to use that, at, you know, for production, for making new music and new culture. And that was like a major super super important development, but they appropriated that technology. They manipulated it. They changed how it was used and why it was used. And they undermined the intention of, you know, the medium itself. So also some other quotes that Goldberg has, the cut is another elemental DJ technique that prefigured the use of the di digital sample or allowing the DJ to catch any moment of a record, introduce it into the mix. The cut became the foundation of all future turntable manipulation. So basically saying, you know, like the cut, you know, taking 10 seconds or 20 seconds of a, of a record and rearranging it in a new way with the same copy of that record or a different drum break or a different record you know, um, became the, the base ideology for all sample-based production that um, came after it. Um, so literally, you know, digital sampling is the literal automation of the DJ's production approaches. That's why I always say, you know, beat making is an extension of DJing because you're listening, especially sample-based, because sample -based, you're listening for moments on records, you're then cutting them from those records, you're then chopping them, you know, and then you're reintroducing them in a new, uh, a new arrangement, you know. Um, but that's super important, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, many of the best producers, in my opinion, uh, many of the best beat makers, right, were DJs first. Pete Rock, uh, Diamond D, Lord Finesse, you know, uh, 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 Large Professor, all these people you know, that are foundational, um, you, you know, beat makers, they have a DJing background. And that meant they, they knew the music, they knew the beats, you know, they knew what was on records, they knew what they could take and they could flip into sampling, you know, um, you know, so they had the archive of the records and, and it's just really scratching and cutting, you know, an extension, an arm of that um, is, is, is sample-based beat making. Another really important song in the history of DJ music is Rocket. Uh, this, this is, you know, uh, you know Herbie Hancock uh, put, this, put this song out on a record called um, Future Shock. came out in 1983. And this is, a, this is major. You know, Her Herbie Hancock, you know, for being an incredible talent in jazz, you know, he never, he didn't just say stuck, you know, in a particular moment. He always was evolving. He was not like snobby about it. You know, he did, you know, cool jazz. He did fusion. He, 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 he did some modal stuff, you know, whatever. And, and then he, he, he was not afraid to move into electronic and keyboards and, and you know, making, making different types of music. And that's what Future Shock was. It was this, you know, electro jazz funk album. And uh, yeah, he, he had uh, Grand Mixer DXT scratch on it. And it's incredibly important. Um, you know, this record, uh, you know, uh, Rocket was, um, you know, the first to have a DJ scr scratching on it mu musically. And it was a major record. It was on a major record label. It had biggest uh, sales, um, awards, uh, you know, Grammys, music video, um, uh, Grand Mixer DXT. Uh, played at the 84 Grammy Awards, which uh, I'll show you a little clip of. And, and, and so this is so important for this. Um, up until that point, you know, hip hop records maybe had some scratching on it. You know, they did, uh, you know, uh, some DJ stuff on, on rap records, but this was the first really non-rap record or hip hop record to, to have that on that. And it became so important, specifically the 84 Grammy the uh, performance because before that you could just you know hip-hop heads people who listen to rap records they could just hear they could just hear the scratching they didn't really know what it was here you get to see DXT um, cut up you know the fresh sample 
um, which is a classic DJ uh, sample, the Fresh and Awe, which actually comes from uh, the B-side of Change That Beat. Uh, there's a link to it in the slides if you want to check it out. But all these super important DJs that came out of, you know, um, different areas of the country, specifically the Bay Area, Los Angeles, outside of the tri-state area, this is the first time where they get to see a DJ cutting, scratching, you know, and it was musical as fuck, you know, and it influenced all of these DJs who went on to be like, you know, kings and queens of, of scratching, you know, um, a lot of Filipino DJs uh, in the Bay Area, um, and we'll talk about that uh, a few units down, down the road. So this performance allowed them to visualize what scratching was, you know, um, whereas before they had just heard it. Okay, so it's just super, super duper important.